this is Dallas Thornton here, and this video was requested by Flynn from Annapolis, Maryland. What's going on, Flynn? So Flynn wondered, can you walk us through uh, maybe a video tutorial or just slow down uh, as a villain so that we can learn to play the guitar part? And absolutely, thanks for writing. So here we go. Our chords are going to be, we're in the key of A major, which has in the key signature three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. It's going to be important. And the chords are going to be A, C sharp dominant seven, so that's the only one, it's the only chord that's not in the key signature, F minor, and D. So we're going to use a few little Hendrixy decorations here. When I say Hendrixy, I mean Jimi Hendrix, not the gin. Uh, I have to, okay. Uh, we've got bass, bass, rake the chord, do a little hammer on pull off at the top, and then play the B string and the G string. So, bass, bass, rake the chord, hammer on, pull off, play the B string and the G string. Next chord, we're gonna use this shape of the C sharp dominant 7 chord. So, it's gonna be second finger on the 4. Followed by the first finger, third finger. Pinky's gonna go right there at the top on the uh, on the high E string, and you're gonna let this B string ring free. So, and the move is just to give it a little oomph. So it sounds like it goes, but actually it's just a little, and you do that by just pulling off as you let go. You have to stop it with this hand afterwards, so. So that's gonna be, you're gonna go to your F sharp chord and you're gonna go bass, bass, little double stop here on the D string and the G string. And then the last chord is gonna be uh, D, and so you're gonna play a C shape bar chord of the D. So here's your C. Just want to visualize that shape as you as you um, trace this triad. So you're gonna go. the The notes are one, three, five. You're gonna add a six, and then one, three, and you're just gonna pull off to two. And you're gonna slide in using a major seven. So here we go. So we're gonna go. The major seven here in this case is C sharp. So slide into D. So uh, slide into D. But keep this uh, this kind of swung feel. Do 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 do. So you're gonna skip the downbeat for the next one. One and so very similar. Um, no little decoration on that on the A, and the same thing here on the C sharp dominant. And the same thing here on the F. The only difference is now for the D chord, we're gonna see this, uh, see if you can visualize this D chord here, which is based on the A major bar chord. With the five and the seven. And then you're, you've got. So Hendrix did this a lot where you have a chord. So in this case, you've got your D here. And then right here, where you've, you can sort of visualize your ring finger or your third finger as an anchor point and use that as now your first finger's anchor point. And you can use little double stops or little decorations from here. So. so a double stop with the D and the G. Another one with using the D and the G. Now we're on the A and the D for a double stop. And that top uh, note or strike is a, um, is it your D and your G again, so D and D. And you start the verse. Moving on to the pre-chorus, we're gonna use the same chords, but only play the basses of those chords, and we're gonna palm mute. Maybe she's so babe. 
So, little palm mutes there with a little slide at the end. Next, you're going to hit your distortion and rock the f*** out. These are all just power chords, which is just the one, the five, and the octave. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. And uh, you're going to end with a... So you're in F sharp, that last chord, and it's going to be, you're going to rake the top of the F sharp to get to this note here. And then it switches, the chord switches to D, so you're going to use an open D as you... So that leads us back into our interlude section, which is going to start with the same chords as the verse. So you've got your A, and you're going to outline it in a slightly different way than before. You're going to outline it more like how a bass player would outline an A chord. So in the key of A, we've got 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. The next chord is going to be your C sharp dominant 7. And we're going to outline a C sharp dominant 7 triad sliding into it. So using all the same techniques that we've been talking about previously. So. One, four to five, flat seven to one, and a three. You notice that the third of this chord, a C sharp dominant 7 chord, that's an F, an F natural. And in the key signature, we should have an F sharp. Remember that uh, the key of A has F-sharp, C-sharp, and G-sharp in the key signature. So, this C-sharp dominant 7 was always a little rascal. It doesn't belong in the key of A because it has an F natural instead of a an F-sharp. So, um, and there's a reason for that, music theory-wise. It's the 5 of 6 chord, so it leads you to an F minor, uh, or F-sharp minor chord. Uh, we can talk about that later. In this case, um, you really want to emphasize, if you're playing a solo over a chord that is uh, secondary dominant or is just not in the key for any other reason, then you're going to want to really emphasize that note. It's a way of expressing that you know what's going on, basically. It's a way of outlining the chords so that so that it's it rings true that yes indeed this is a five of six chord uh, it's a c sharp dominant seven it's not c sharp minor this is where we are so i'm doing that here by just outlining the chord and making sure that i hit this this um f natural and then immediately the chord the next chord um, changes to an f sharp minor chord which would be like here so so that'll be my next note and that's the 11 here, uh, the 11th fret uh, on your G string. And we're going to do a very similar technique to what we've been doing before. Excuse the clam. This little second section is very much like what we did before the... But instead it's going to be hammer-ons and pull-offs getting fancy with it. Uh. And that little part is the same as it was before, but you just repeat it twice. So the whole section. into the second verse. Um, Pre-chorus, same. Uh, chorus, same again. And then we're going to go into a bridge. And for that bridge, it's going to be power chords. Um, this time, instead of doing one, five, and eight, it's like a half power chord. It's just the one and the five. And we're going we're gonna to hit higher notes in the chord. I'm going to crank on some distortion for this. C sharp 
here. Ah. This next one's F sharp. And we play the third of the chord up there. And then to D. I'm, all that I'm doing here is I'm hitting um, on the B string, I'm hitting the 12th fret with my pinky, which is the note B. Everything else I'm choking out with my first finger. And then we're going to go up to E. So I'm only playing three notes here. I'm playing 12th fret, 14th fret, and uh, where my pinky is up here on the 14th fret. You notice that with distortion, just three notes, it gets a little muddy and, and hectic. So that's why we're not playing the whole chord. But it's enough to outline basically a an E dominant seven chord. E dominant seven goes to uh, goes to A. Um, if you don't understand why, it's a music theory thing. Feel free to email me, um, or I do Skype lessons as well. Just uh, hit me up. That leads us back to Are you gonna leave me and break my heart? Basically, um, depending on the acoustic or versus the electric version, I do different things. But um, that's pretty much it for the song. Um, the only thing that I would say lastly is um, when I play it acoustic, I like to add in these kind of nice open chords. <laughs> But when I do it electric, I do power chords because it's distorted, and like I said, even just three notes sounds big and muddy. Um, and then the solo should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if not, let me know. Um, so, Flynn, thank you for making this video happen, and thank you all for watching. Uh, feel free to reach out. You can DM me on Instagram. My handle is at Dallas Thornton. And um, on YouTube, just uh, drop me a comment, or on my website, which is whoisdallasthornton.com, you can send me an email. Ciao, everybody. Happy playing.